Yo, what's happening, boys and girls? How the devil are we? Shanksy here, and today we are going to do a total breakdown on Humble Enchantress. Everything you need to know. Stick around. Let's have a little look. What's going on boys and girls? How the devil are we? Shanksy here and today we are going to be taking a look at one of my favourite characters in the game, Umble Enchantress. She has done a job for me since day one of pulling her. She's absolutely awesome and if you've just won her either through the tournament that's going on at the moment or you've just pulled her, congratulations. I think you're going to have an awful lot of fun with this champion. Right, so guys, my videos are going to be a little bit different to all of the other champion breakdowns and builds and stuff like that. Uh, that you may have seen over the times. What we're going to be doing, guys, is focusing more on the gear, what I've got on her and what you should have on her, as opposed to running through a load of dungeons, showing you a load of stuff at level 20. She, I can't do a lot of level 20 content right now due to the gear and things like that. I can do quite a few bits of level 20 going quite slow. And Umbul is actually one of my, uh, one of my girls that helps uh, put all that together. So what I really want to be doing is focusing more on the skills What's worth booking up and what you should be looking to gear up if you've got lucky enough to pull an Umbral Enchantress. So we're going to start very, very quickly with her skills. Uh, her A1 is attack one enemy. Damage increases as current HP decreases and her damage is based on defense. So that's really, really nice. Is it worth booking? Not really. Not really. If you can get away without booking that, uh, you, you're okay, right? It's not going to really hurt you. It's an extra 20% damage. It's not going to be the, the end of the world. I'd say a lot of the times with epic books, legendary books, you really want to be focusing on things that give you an extra buff chance, and it, like reduced turn meter, uh, reduced cooldown on an ability, that type of thing, as opposed to just flat damage. Don't get me wrong. If you book her, it's not the end of the world. You've not, you've not wasted books, in my opinion. Right. Immolate is her A2. This is attacks all enemies and has an 80% chance of placing a block buffs debuff for three turns. Now, once this is booked, this goes up to 100%, providing you've got the accuracy to do so. And again, the damage is based on defense. This is actually a really hard hitting move, as is her, uh, her third skill, her A3. It's a really hard hitting move. Again, damage based on defense. Plus... It's going to work out really nicely for Arena. A blocks buff uh, for three turns is absolutely huge, uh, especially towards the later stages of Arena. In the early stages of Arena, depending on if you've built this girl right, she might actually just nuke the whole team anyway, uh, just off of this ability. Right, her A3 is where it gets a little bit spicy, right? Attacks all enemies, has an 80% chance of placing a provoke debuff for two turns. Again, once booked, up to 100%. Places an unkillable buff on this champion for two turns. Places a block cooldown skills debuff on this champion for five turns. The block cooldown skills debuff cannot be resisted or blocked and cannot be removed. So what she's going to do is a massive AoE attack and put a provoke on all of the enemy. Now, unfortunately, while she's provoked, she can only use her A1. But that is two turn provoke everyone facing her where she's got the unkillable buff on and she does more damage the more hp that she loses allowing your your other champions to get through that wave or to get through that fight unscathed is absolutely huge right so it's 100 percent when booked and well worth booking both of these in my opinion are absolutely well worth booking now for the masteries I've gone down the defense and support route. If I wanted, you could easily go down the offense route uh, and support route. I'd basically come down here for a little bit more accuracy. I uh, wanted a little bit more chance of placing um, debuff from skills or artifacts, mainly because I used to have a frost set on her. And I would really recommend a frost set on her uh, as well, guys. But we're skipping a little bit ahead, right? So I've gone down. Now, keep in mind, you can look at this by all, by all means. But... Always make sure what you're uh, what you're doing. What you like, because for example, uh, crit rate, crit chance will be really nice if you're building more of a nuke. This type of works for what I've got set up. So I've gone for flat defense. Uh, I've gone for decreased damage received by AOE attacks. I've gone for a little bit of a, a heal there each time an enemy is healed. 
Um, I've gone for uh, increase ally resist for five for each buff placed on them by this champion. I've gone for uh, decrease the damage of uh, an ally receives from the enemy first hit in each round by 20%. This champion will receive that damage instead. She's my tank, right? I want her tanking all these shots for everyone. And then I've gone for an extra 200 uh, defense. Now, if I had a little bit of better gear, I would probably go down the offense route um, ideally. I think it would probably be better as opposed to a flat 200 defense. 200 defense is fairly easy to get hold of, right? Um, this is increase uh, the damage received by 10% if this champion has stun. Uh, sorry, decrease the champ uh, damage received by 10% if this champion has stun, sleep, fear, true fear, or freeze debuffs. Keep in mind, a lot of the time, she's going to be tanking all of this damage. So it's worth trying to negate a little bit of that, right? Has a 30% chance of placing a provoke debuff. Um, then we go down to increase resist by 10 but each debuff on this champion stacks up to 30. And then we've got a slight chance of counter-attacking. But this is the masteries that I've gone with, guys. Probably at this stage in the game, it would be worth me going down the offense route for her and building her a little bit more of a nuke. But I've not had the gear up until recently to do so. So, so to carry me through a lot of the content that I've done so far, this is what I've had laid up, right? But let's have a little look at the gear and what you should be building on her, as opposed to maybe what I've actually built on her. Right, so let's start with her banner. Now, you really, really, really want a uh, an accuracy banner without a shadow of a doubt. Unfortunately, I've only managed to find a resistance banner at this point in time. Uh, this would actually probably be miles better for her as well if we were to roll this up. But you want an accuracy banner, ideally with the speed subset uh, and a little bit of defense, right? But accuracy is what we're going to be wanting to build on. As you can see, I've got 137 accuracy on her at the moment. I would like this a lot higher. Uh, we've just started getting to the point where I can actually really rework her gear uh, to do that. But I'm not going to change the banner just yet, even though that defense banner would be much better for her. Because I've type of got her a little bit speed tuned in my arena team at the moment. So ideally, an accuracy banner. If you can't get hold of an accuracy banner, a defense banner uh, would be ideal. HP, third choice, and then worst case scenario, whack a resistance banner on them. Uh, worst, worst case scenario, right? Then, for the amulet, you want crit damage all day long. And again, I haven't got it, right? I just haven't got it. Um, what you really want to be seeing, though, in the substats is accuracy as well. So you want crit damage with accuracy uh, and ideally a little bit more defense as well. This champion does not scale off of attack whatsoever. Uh, the fact that I've got an attack uh, amulet on there breaks my soul a little bit. It really does, right? The reason it's on there is because it's given me 20% accuracy and a little bit more crit damage. Now, unfortunately, I, I could probably now get away with trying to roll some of these up. And it would be a little bit better. So, for example, this one would definitely be better without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, wherever the rolls went into. But ideally, we'd want something with defense as a percentage down there uh, as well. That would work out miles better for her. So, crit damage on the amulet is definitely what you want to be going for. Um, then defense. Then HP. Again, you just want to be swerving attack, right? And then finally, we've actually got a piece that's worthwhile on her. Uh, defense on the ring. <coughs> Excuse me. Defense on the ring is absolutely perfect. That's what you want to be going for all day long. This is actually a really nice ring for her. We'll roll this up and get her in this immediately, I think. Uh, that's going to improve, improve her defense. The more defense she's got, boom, the more damage she's going to be putting out. Then let's have a little look at her boots. So, ideally, you want to go for speed boots, right? Nine times out of ten, you want to be going for speed boots on a lot of your champions. So, speed boots. But what subsets are we going to be looking for? We're going to be looking for accuracy. We're going to be looking for crit rate. We're going to be looking for crit damage. And that's about it, really. Like, and defense. Obviously, always defense. De defense, accuracy, crit rate, crit damage. Probably in that order. All right? In that order. You want to get Umbral up to about 200% ac 200 accuracy. In my opinion, uh, it's going to really help out. Now, once you've got an accuracy banner, you're going to find a big chunk of that accuracy straight away. Right, let's go on to the chest. 
Uh, we are running a defense chest on her. And to be fair, that is pretty much what you want. A defense uh, percentage chest with a subset of speed, accuracy, and um, crit rate as well. Right, so you want to be building her crit rate up as much as possible. Because she does hit like a truck. She really does. Uh, I wish I had this crit damage up a little bit more. And her crit rate up a little bit more. I wish I could find it in my gear. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit nervous about taking this piece off her again. Because she's so speed tuned up at the moment. Uh, I really don't want to be taking this piece off her just yet. So, defense percentage for the chest piece. With, again, substats going for defense, crit rate, crit damage, and, of course, speed and accuracy. Right. Defense on the gloves. But if I could get away with it, I probably could at this point in time. If I could get away with it, I would probably now put her in some crit rate gloves. All right. So if I could get away with some crit rate gloves with some accuracy. Let me see if I can find anything like that. Crit rate gloves with... Should we go speed and accuracy? Have we got anything like that? We haven't got anything like that. So let's go for crit damage and speed. So something like this could work. Um, I might be getting a little bit greedy here. Let's go for defense. So something like this. Speed defense percentage on a crit rate glove would actually be beautiful for her. I would lose a little bit of accuracy. And again, I can't risk that at the moment. But something like this to boost up her crit rate. Uh, so she's going to be hitting harder, hitting more often. And, of course, with a little bit more defense would be ideal. She would lose a big chunk of defense at the moment. Uh, but this is, like, literally, the build that I've got, guys, is so so open to change, open to improvement. It's unreal. But that's what I'd be recommending, guys, you're going for crit rate on the gloves. Uh, worst case scenario, you can't get crit rate on the gloves, go for defense. All day long, simple as that. Right, then on the shield, obviously, it's just going to be flat defense. Nothing we can do about that. Uh, you're going to be looking for accuracy, crit rate, speed as your substats, right? Now, if you can if you can find more crit rate in your build, this is where you might actually start be looking for a little bit of crit damage now, just to help her out along the uh, the way. Right for the helm, obviously HP. We're going to be looking for again accuracy, speed, defense. You're seeing a running trend here, right? Everything we want is to boost up her defense, her crit rate, her speed, her accuracy. If it doesn't have them stats. Get it off your umbrella. Simple as that. If it doesn't have them stats, it ain't going on her. Uh, and then again, we go to crit rate, a little bit of HP, all that type of stuff. Now, as far as sets go, what would I recommend? I would actually really recommend a frost set uh, and a speed set, right? If I could put this umbral in any gear I wanted, I would definitely, definitely, definitely go for frost set uh, with a speed set. If I could find the accuracy in my build elsewhere. If not, I would go Frost Set with a Accuracy Set. Because obviously the Accuracy is going to really, really help her out. You could go more speed on her. Uh, or just a couple of speed sets. But I feel like the Frost Set, the chance to um, hit that freeze every time someone hits her. Is actually really, really super strong, guys. And you could redo her Masteries as a result of that. So if I'm moving down here, if I can find it. Anywhere, anywhere down here. I think I've already passed it, don't I? But yeah, a frost set is what I'd be looking for, guys, ideally. So, we've talked over a build. We've talked over what I think of her and all that. But what we will do is actually have a quick look at her in Arena, I think. Because uh, this is part of my Arena team that I run. And uh, I really, 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 really like her in this. Let's see if we can find something that we can beat. We're in Gold 4 and it's just hit reset at the moment. So, it's all a little bit... Right, right here we are, guys. We're back. The game crashed. Literally, as I was about to do this, the game went into maintenance. Now, we're going to show her in the arena. Keep in mind, she's nowhere near the perfect build for what I want right now. Uh, we are in gold four, so this is a 50-50 no matter who we fight. Uh, I would, I will definitely be taking this, right? I will definitely be taking this fight later, but she's not going to quite do it for the video. But do you ever watch these uh, these Champion Spotlight videos on YouTube? And like they, they swerve the one-player fights and stuff. I'm like, I'm looking for that. All day long, I'm looking for that. <laughs> So we're going to try this miscreated monster team. We may well lose, guys. We may well lose. Uh, but we're going to give it a good whirl regardless. And hopefully, we'll get to show off a little bit of Umbral's, uh, Umbral's kit, right? So we should be able to go first. And hopefully, we're quick enough that we can speed up here and, uh, and get everyone else in. So we're going to do the turn up speed. Unfortunately, we didn't go fast enough. But we are going to be able to strip off all them buffs. 
and then we're going to use Umbral Enchantress here. Now, we we could go for the block debuffs, right? But with my setup, I'm going to go and hit them with, hopefully, land these provokes. So you can see we've got one, two, three provokes landed up. So if Lord Shazar doesn't manage to kill everyone, which he probably will, but if he doesn't, they're all going to be stuck hitting Umbral Enchantress. So straight away, you can see the damage that Umbral Enchantress did there as well. Is absolutely pretty crazy. Now Lord Shazar's got his bombs on. We've won the fight. Beautiful. And if you look at that build, Lord Shazar done 107k damage with his bombs. i will move my big fat head out of the way. But Umbral Enchantress done 99k. Keep in mind, we've not got a build right. We've got fairly broken sets on her. The reason that we've got a build like this is she goes in order of Madame Cerise, then Umbral Enchantress. And I haven't got quite the gear to speed tune that accurately by putting the best gear that I've got. So it actually really works pretty crazy that she can still do so much damage against a fairly decent team, right? Um, so if you've just got her, guys, congratulations. I'm not going to show you the dungeon fights or anything like that. She can do a job. She does a really good job of getting you through the waves, especially if you've got to a, to a point in the dungeons where you're struggling with, like Ice Golem Peak or something like that. As you can see, we can get through all of this Ice Golem Peak, but it's not quick. But she does a really good job of controlling the waves on each and every one. Now, she doesn't bring a lot to the dragon fight uh, per se, but she does do a lot to, uh, to help support the team so these guys aren't getting beat up on every single wave. So that is it. That is uh, that is my guide to Unbull Enchantress. Congratulations if you pulled her. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope this video has helped uh, to work out what you want to do with your Umbral Enchantress. Let me know what you've uh, decided to do with her down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, do me a massive favor. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. If you want to see more content from yours truly, hit that subscribe button. Turn them notifications on. Become part of the notification squad and all that good stuff. But until next time, be smart, be strong, be safe. And I'll see you on the flip side. You take it easy.